prophesied the warnings of the Lord against the shepherds of Israel who have fed themselves instead of the sheep. From such words, it is absolutely right for many of us to be reminded that we must take care of the poor and the needy, since they are closer to the heart of God. For this, I believe the Colossian sisters have been doing very well, and your works are greatly acknowledged in many places of the world, especially in Hong Kong. Where you started your first global mission in 1860. Since I spent more than five years there, I have seen your works, 13 schools and one hospital. You have definitely accomplished very well about your mission. Congratulations. Therefore, as a simple young Jesuit priest, I have nothing to preach. Because actually, just three days ago, I had celebrated on my own my first anniversary of ordination. So I'm still very young and simple. Thank you. Because apparently you already know enough about running missions. Then I will only share with you some little points that I have learned from my Jesuit formation. First, we discern. In the first reading, we hear the condemnation of the shepherds, namely the leaders. If we look deeper into the biblical history, then we realize, in fact, they were not really doing nothing, they were doing something. But what they had done did not meet the needs of the people. Therefore, to feed the sheep, they were not doing very well. We must know what is missing to take care of the people through listening and meaningful dialogue with those we serve. By this, we try to understand the context and the expectation of others while making ourselves understood by those to whom we serve. Especially our values, which are very much related to the comparisons of our religious congregations. Then we go to the second point, the tension. From what we have heard in the Gospel, we notice that the Lord of the household gives everyone the same reward. And the first glance, this is unfair. However, here the final reward is the kingdom of heaven. And there is nothing more than what is already given to us. Now the tension reviews. On one side, there is a prophetic message which leads to the eternal salvation of the people of God, while on the other side we find a pragmatic situation that can cause a hostile response from those for whom we dedicate our lives. So what shall we do? Like the incarnated Word, we go into the context of those who are in suffering and in we become a part of them, and at the same time, we live the prophetic vocation that we have received from God. I have one example. In 1860, when the first group of six Canadian sisters arrived in Hong Kong, they encountered many who were poor, and they started immediately to take care of many girls whose families could not sustain their lives. Due to the lack of food, the sisters shared their own food with the adopted girls. Because of this, before long, several of them were starved, fell sick and died. Today, this story of the first Canadian sisters is still remembered by many Catholics of Hong Kong. So this is the answer of tension, a call to love by God which proceeds always from the his, his heroic history and the charism of the living experiences of your religious life. Such treasurable history is always providing a starting point for the future. May you always live in the blessings of Christ with the intercession of your founders, Saint Magdalene of Canossa, and your famous predecessor,
是新竹市的民意